Good morning. It's good to see you. It's good to see you as we come together for worship this morning on this family service. Just a few announcements. Um, Kennywell, as I'm sure many of you are aware by now, is in Zimbabwe. His sister passed away very suddenly on uh, Monday morning, um, and so he's gone to Zimbabwe. So our prayers, Feneri, please pass on our thoughts and prayers for, for Kennywell and the rest of his family um, this week. I think the funeral was on Wednesday, um, but Kenny's got a few things to sort out there. Um, we have a job advertisement for a post at DHQ. If you'd like to, if any, for divisional administrative support. So if anybody's interested in that, is the poster up? The poster's up in the hallway. Uh, please have a look at that. Um, you'll see that in the foyer we have a, a table of handmade uh, craft things. This has come from a Ukrainian lady that we have been supporting uh, uh, through a couple of weeks now um, and she's asked us to uh, uh, set, uh, promote these things on her behalf. It's a minimum donation of three pounds and the money will go towards her hopefully being able to reinvest that to start a, a business of her own uh, in this country. This is what she did in Ukraine. Uh, she's been in three months, is that what she said? She's been in the UK three months. Um, so please, if you are able, have a look at them uh, and it's, as we say, it's a minimum donation of three pounds. And uh, we start on Friday of this week, we start uh, a time of furlough. Um, we are away until the Sunday the 19th. We will be back then. Uh, next week, Major Lorna is, has kindly agreed to lead worship. Um, so if you need us in an emergency, Lindsay has our private numbers and we'll be able to be, get hold of on those. Uh, I think that is everything. Thank you very much. Enjoy your worship. Good morning to you all. It's good to see you here for worship this morning. We're going to start, start as we mean to go on by asking that God might fill our lives, fill this place, every part of us with praise. So we're going to sing number 361. If you're using a songbook, fill thou my life, O Lord my God, in every part with praise, that my whole being may proclaim thy being and thy ways. Let's stand and we'll sing together. <coughs>
but all my life in every step, so no part of day or night be without God's presence, no part of day or night from sacredness be free in all my life, every step be fellowship with thee. Now we know that the Lord is with us continually during our journey of life, don't we? When we're asleep, whether we're awake, whatever we are doing, wherever we are journeying, God is there. The difference being whether we acknowledge him or not on that journey with us. Now we're going to um, turn to a time of prayer and uh, we're using different colours this morning for our time of prayer. I wonder if anybody, um, anybody has the favourite colour that is green. Anybody green? Would you like to come and get... Now, don't pull these right across the hall because everybody will be tripping over them when we have the, um, the offering, but if you would like to come and get this green one and just pull it out to the edge of the mercy seat and then let it go, that would be good. I meant, I meant like here. <laughs> edge of the mercy seat. That's good. There we go. We've got a green one. Lovely. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> Green represents the world that we live in, the world that we are blessed by God to share. Perhaps the food that we enjoy. We don't always think of green as being um, uh, uh, an enjoyable food. It's a tasty food. It's a wholesome food. We think of God's provision for us. Anybody like yellow? Somebody upstairs who likes yellow, come down. I might as well use somebody upstairs to start with. You're going to have to run down very, very quickly, Dom. Come and get this yellow one. Yellow represents Jesus, the light of the world. And when we think about our world, there are good things about our world. But there are also some things that are quite dark. Into the mercy seat. There we go. A little bit more go. Lovely. Brilliant. When Jesus came into the world, a light came in to our lives. The possibility of living and walking in the light came into our world. And even the darkness we hear from Scripture, and we know from that account of Easter, could not put that light out. So we thank God for that light in our lives. Who likes jeans? Who has a favourite um, pair, uh, pair of jeans? Because the next colour is indigo. Anybody got jeans? Come on, come and get this one. There we go. Indigo, the colour that a lot of pairs of jeans are dyed with, that sort of dark, rich blue. And we thank God for our clothing, for the warmth, for that favourite comfy pair of jeans. But we're also mindful of those who are um, not paid fairly for their labour. And so we think about that as we thank God for the clothing that we have. The injustice sometimes of those who are not paid fairly for their work. Blue. Who would like to get hold of the blue one? Come along then. We'll go blue this side as well. Can you reach that one? we go right down to the bottom could let a little bit more out that's, that's it and with the blue one blue is a very peaceful color isn't it if you want to have a peaceful life you're supposed to paint things blue peace in our own lives but we think also this morning of those who are living with anxiety and we think of our world some places where there is not peace we think of Ukraine and the um, the war that is still going on there. And we pray God's peace upon our world, as well as in our own lives and those who we know. Let's move to red. Who likes red? Come on. I'll try and untangle this one. Pull it out from the 
this side. Brilliant. Keep pulling right down to the bottom. That's it. We'll let a little bit more out. There we go. Now, red is quite an angry colour. In the way that blue is a peaceful colour, red is quite an angry colour. Um, I wonder how, why there are so many red cars on the roads, actually. My car is red. Um, but sometimes we can use that anger. It's what we do with that righteous anger when we are fighting for injustice within our world. Even Jesus became angry at injustice and things that were happening that were, weren't part of God's plan. So it is okay to have that righteous anger. It's what we channel it into. We're missing a couple of colours, or just one colour maybe. It is orange. Who would like to get the orange one? I saw Caleb come up before, so Caleb, perhaps Caleb can get this one. I dangle it down here, Caleb. Brilliant. Woo. Thank you. We're well tangled up on here now. Orange reminds us of God's presence, the fire of the Holy Spirit that we celebrate at Pentecost, which empowers us, which refines us, um, which helps us to focus and gives us vision. God's presence living in us in our world today. We do have one more left. It's violet. We don't have anybody here called violet, do we? Would somebody like to come and get this one? Come on then. Tamla's going to come and... We'll go right to the end there. Don't worry, they're not in order now. Give me more of that one now. Violet, that kind of purpley hue that reminds us of the royalty of the King of Kings, His Majesty, who we bow before and we present all of these prayers that we have, uh, we have come across, represented by the colours of the rainbow. Let's sing together. The worship group are going to come and lead us with this song, King of Kings. Majesty, God of heaven, living in me, gentle saviour, closest friend, strong deliverer, beginning and end. All of those rainbow colours, the peace, the gentle saviour, the God of heaven, God's Holy Spirit living in us, the majesty of that royal colour. All within me cries out in praise, your majesty. In royal robes I don't deserve, I live to serve your majesty. Let's sing together before we pray.
And Lord, we thank you for your presence with us here this morning. We thank you, Lord, for Jesus. We come into your house this morning because of the way that has been opened up for us by Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for the goodness of the world around us. We thank you, Lord, for the basic things of the food that we eat, the comfort of the bed we have slept in, the clothing which is keeping us warm and comfortable. Lord, we thank you that as we come before you this morning, we place you in that rightful place within our core family, our core fellowship, in the very centre of all that we are. Lord, help us as we worship together to focus on you. Be with us, Lord, we pray. Amen. We're going to hand over to the band just now, and they're going to minister to us. did the jazz hands at the end of that. <laughs> Thank you for that uh, song of celebration this morning. Thank you. Now I need um, five, six, seven, eight people to help with the next part. You need quite a steady hand. So if you're very little, you might need a grown-up with you. If there are more than eight, it probably won't work. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Right. Okay. You can all have a turn. You can all have a turn. Okay. Um, right. Right. Do you want to take a big step back?
I have a lot of other things on the platform, so I'm hoping nobody's going to trip over anything. Um, basically, um, what we're going to do is a bit of a trick. This is what I want to happen, okay? You don't need to hold it, they can stay on the platform like that. But this is what we're going to do. We're going to pull the card out as quickly as possible so that this cup drops into this cup, okay? So the top cup drops into the bottom one. Right, this is how it's supposed to go. Because I was holding it. Okay, so you're going to pull it out quickly like that so that the top one goes into the bottom. Right. Hang on a second, hang on a second, because I've got one here. Right, let's have somebody at that end. And... Um, All you're doing is pulling the card out as fast as possible. But I would leave it on the side. Would, I would leave it flat on there if you like. And if it, um, if it falls off, somebody will run and um, do the first one rather than the second. Excellent. Right. <laughs> somebody else want to have a go? Go on, have a go at another one then. Oh. Yeah, have another go. Set it back up and have another go. Make sure it doesn't fall off. Other way round. Other way. That's it. Both ups, up, upwards. Oh, it's, it's not as easy as it looks, is it? Not as easy. You've got to get hold of the card and then kind of yank it out really quickly. Right. We can, we'll set these up afterwards as well. Go on, Dom. You have a, you have a go at one. Oh, both falling off this time. <laughs> Do you want to have a go this side? Go on then. Um, Lucas, have a go on this side. Excellent. If you've managed to do it, actually, do it again, then leave the card on the top. We'll wait until we've got all the cards done. Right. Do you want to have a go? Oh. Another one this side. Do you want to have a go? I'm not quite sure of everybody's name. Oh, I think go a bit quicker. Have another go, but go a bit quicker. That's it. <laughs> Who hasn't had a go yet? Do you want to have a go? Oh, I think you've got to go really quick and straight out rather than doing it upwards. I hope you have a go as well. Excellent. Right, if you've done them, leave the card on the top. Right, do you want to have a go? If you manage to get one done, then... <laughs> Pop the card on the top. That's it. Um, we've got one left this side. Um, who hasn't had a go? Anyone not had a go? Do you want to have a go this side? There's one lap, that's that. Oh, we're setting them up again. Right, if you haven't had a go, set one up quickly and let's have a go at one left at this side. <laughs> Yay! And one left this side. Who wants to do that one? And one left. It was two left. Go on, have another go. Oh! Nearly, nearly. We'll pop it on the top anyway. We've got one left this side. Who's going to do it? I've done it! Hey! Right. Would somebody like to hold up the cards? If you happen to do one and you did it right, um, go and get the card and hold up. But you've got to keep them in the order that they're in. And if you don't get hold of a card, I want you to go back down there very carefully and see if you can tell what the cards say. Okay. There's one on the end there. Somebody get it? There's there are two this side. Right, if you move around, does the way it makes sense? Hold your card up if you've got a card. There's one spare one there. Yeah. 
Yep. Yeah. 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 Turn them around that way so everyone can see them. That's it, the K on the end. The K on the end. That's it. Brilliant. Can you tell what it says? Hold them up. Right, we're missing an apostrophe. Okay, anybody who's interested in spag at school, we need an apostrophe in here, but it actually says Noah's Ark, right? We've got the rainbow, we've got the words Noah's Ark, we're going to continue that during the meeting. If you want to pass your cards in to me, that would be brilliant, but I think you're staying up here because they're singing a song. I, I think there's a song. If there's anybody that's singing the song that didn't come up to help, would you like to join us now? I think Adam and Mabel are coming up. Oops. Right, we're going to receive your offering um, now. We're going to sing again together. What a faithful God have I. The worship group are going to come and lead us in that. And then we'll have um, the song from our young people. So you could actually stand up here and sing this song, couldn't you? Unless you want to go and help with the offering.
Right, we are ready, which is good now. Um, if you want to stand up and join in, that will be fabulous as well. All right, but we'll do it, won't we? We'll show them the actions. All right, they're on the screen if you want to copy them as well. Okay, is that all right? Right, let's go, kids. Thank you to our young people for sharing that with us and encouraging us all to give thanks for everything. We now turn to scripture at this point in our worship. We're reading from Genesis chapter 6 and commencing at verse 9. Genesis chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 9 through to the end of the chapter at verse 22. This is the account of Noah. Noah, yeah, we've got the wrong, we've got the wrong scripture up, doesn't just. <laughs> we'll just wait. Noah was a righteous man blameless among all the people of his time, and he walked with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people. 
for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 450 feet long, 75 feet wide and 45 feet high. Make a roof for it and finish the ark to within 18 inches of the top. Put a door in the side of the ark and make lower, middle and upper decks. I'm going to bring, bring flood waters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens. Every creature that has breath of life in it, everything on earth will perish. But I will establish my covenant with you and you will enter the ark. You and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. You are to bring an Bring into the ark two of every all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. Two of every kind of bird, of every kind of animal, of every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. You are to take every kind of food that is to be eaten and store it away as food for you and for them. Noah did everything just as God commanded him. Amen. Now, rather than uh, get Michael to read an entire chapter, I thought we would dramatise the next bit. Um, so I've got a hose pipe ready. Um, that was a joke. I do not have an ark that is... Um, 500 and something cubits, 540 was it? Um, I don't have any um, cypress or cypress or whatever wood, um, but I do have a cardboard arc and some parcel tape, which is here. So um, I'm going to give the arc to Michael because he's quite tall, but I also need um, two other quite tall people. Um, so I wondered whether Kieran, to make sure that he's actually listening, would help. And um, perhaps Sophie, would you come and help? It's lovely when you pick on people and they don't really want to come and help, but they do anyway because their names have been mentioned. Right, lovely. Um, I need um, somebody to be a dove, somebody with small hands to be a dove. Um, it's just going to be like this. Do you want to come down and help? Edith's going to come down and help. I also need somebody to be a raven. Now, this raven can have quite big hands because ravens have got a way bigger wingspan than uh, a dove. Um, who would like to be the raven? Do you want to be a raven? Come on, then. Brilliant. The gloves will be massive, but never mind. Um, right. And I might need somebody at the end to be the rainbow. Who would like to be the rainbow? Anyone can be the rainbow. I'm looking, coming to help you, remember. Okay, so we're going to quickly tell the rest of the story. Now, we know that there's more of the rest of the story than there was in the beginning, um, because uh, God gave Noah these instructions, and then this is what happened after that. Because we heard in verse 22, Noah did everything just as God commanded him. So, the ark is built... And God said to Noah and his family, go into the ark. And then uh, we also hear that he said, take um, two of every kind of animal. Now, has anybody brought um, a, a toy animal with them this morning? Because there is room in the ark. Okay. Do you mind if it goes in the ark? Right. There we go. You brought one. Go and get it quickly then. Anybody else brought an animal with them this morning? Not a real one, I'm hoping. Yeah. It'll go right down to the bottom of the ark. Oh, we've, got, we've got a cow. We've got. We'll take. You'll get them back at the end. I promise. Um, we've got um, a cat and a koala. Hang on a second. Can you can you shout out what you've got, please? That's a koala. We've got a rabbit. Bring it over here, Michael, so everyone can see. Right. The rabbit's going in. I've got a bird. Oh, hang on a second. I've 
second, just a minute. Just, oh my word, that's a big, <laughs> that's a big panda. <laughs> Oh, we've got a Dumbo. <laughs> right. Oh, we've got a kangaroo. There's a kangaroo going in. Just a minute. You will get them back later. That's not an animal. I think that might be a little bit big, so we'll have to carry on holding that. There's a sheep. This guy can be Noah. Yeah, it could be Noah, although we've got... Um, I thought we'd get Major Michael to be Noah because we needed a very old man. Um, <laughs> Are, are they all going in? Is a giraffe going in? We push it down um, to the bottom. You'll have to remind me to give these back at the end of the meeting, otherwise I'll, the next week there's going to be random animals all over the platform and Major Lorna won't know who they belong to because I don't either. Right, what else is going in there? Is that going in? It's, I think it probably is a little bit too big, but we'll hold on to those. Is the elephant going in? And the bunny? Is it going in? Right, bring them over here. We'll pop them in there. It's taking a long time to fill the ark up, but I would imagine it probably did in the first place. Okay. And is the rabbit going in? Yeah. I'm not sure the Spider Man's going in. Is there a room in there? No. No. We're going to hold on to that. Right. If you've brought an animal up and it's gone into the ark safely, you can go and sit back down again. And thank you very much. We've got Noah on the end of there. You've got to hold Noah on the end. You will get them back at the end of the meeting. Absolutely. As soon as the waters have gone down. Well, you can take Noah back, yeah. yeah. Okay. So give them all a nice round of applause. So they go and sit back down. 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, 45 feet high. We could have not fit the ark into this building. It was to be made with um, within 18 inches of the top. There was to be a roof, a door in the side, which we've got. Um, and it had three decks, lower, middle, and top decks. I wonder if there were different types of animals that wouldn't eat each other in, um, in those decks. And then we hear, after the animals went in, that in the 600th year of Noah's life, now, I don't know about you, but my body isn't lasting to what, it's, what my age is now, so 600 years, but I would imagine we lasted a little longer in those days. Then we hear that the springs of the great deep burst forth. The water didn't just come down from the sky in rain, which is what we quite often associate it with. It came up from the ground as well. The springs of the great deep burst forth. Now, you'll notice down here that there's some different fabric. The, um, the, the velvety fabric. So do you want to hold that up? And I'll get the ark to stand behind. Just hold it. Hold it just down here. Um, we need some mountains as well. We need a couple of mountains. Thank you very much. Would you be a mountain? Would you like this? <coughs> Perhaps we'll have the rainbow over this side. Do you want to come to this side? Because you're going to have the rainbow at the end. But we'll hide the rainbow to start with because nobody knew about that when the rain was falling, did they? Right. Do you want to stand to the side here? That's brilliant. Right. So, maybe Sophie and Kieran can get an end of the blue cloth, the, um, the different blue cloth. You'll need to get an end of it where it can rise up and up and up. So down on the floor to start with, because it didn't, we didn't flood the earth within seconds. It's got to take a little bit of time. Hang on a second. Just a moment. I think it's got tangled up while the wife was there. So, for 40 days, 
the flood kept going. A test, this is a test of how tall Michael can get. The waters increased, it lifted the ark high above the earth, it rose so greatly that it covered the mountains. Every living thing on the face of the earth was wiped out. Only Noah was left, and those that were with him on the ark. But we also hear that God had shut the door on the ark. We'll hear a little bit more about that. And the waters flooded the earth. Now we've got a little bit of maths here, because the waters flooded the earth for 150 days. God remembered Noah and all the wild animals, the livestock that were with him on the ark. And now the springs of the deep and the floodgates stopped opening and stopped falling from the sky. And the water receded steadily. Is the mountain hidden? When you see the top of the mountain, there it is. The mountain is starting to be seen again. And the waters continue to recede until the 10th month. Just stop there for a second. And on the first day of the the 10th month, the tops of the mountains became visible. And after 40 days, Noah opened a window in the ark. And he sent out a raven. Now, where's the raven? Right, the raven has to fly all the way around here and back up, but not have anywhere to land. Because that's what happened. There was nowhere for the raven so if you can fly like this all the way across the front here back up these stairs and back into the ark that would be brilliant off you go be careful on the stairs there we go there's the raven there is nowhere for the raven to land the water is covering the face of the earth it's got to go back on the ark a week later Noah sends a dove out where's the dove There, there's the dove, and we'll leave that water there. The dove goes out, has a little fly around. On its way back to the ark, it picks up an olive branch. Just to prove to Noah that new life is starting to grow. Do you want to take it back onto the ark? I will pop it back in there later. I (laughs) apologise. But there was nowhere for it to land. A week later still, the dove takes another trip out. Noah opens the door again, the window again. The dove takes a fly around and it doesn't come back this time. (laughs) It doesn't come back back because the water has receded right way down. And of course, we can open the ark and all of those animals and Noah and his family could come out. And it is then that the beautiful rainbow appears in the sky. I'll put this up just in case you trap your fingers in it. There we go. Right, you might need two hands. And God makes the promise to Noah that never again will he flood the earth. Never again will he destroy um, all living things. And he tells those that come out of the ark. And now I would imagine if they had been in there for that long, that some of those animals would have multiplied anyway whilst they were there. Um, But he tells them to go and to multiply the earth, to subdue it. He tells Noah that they can eat from the land as they choose from now on. Brilliant. That is, in a nutshell, more than a nutshell really, um, the story of Noah and the ark. We're going to give these people a round of applause as they go and sit down. Thank you very much. We'll just... <laughs> My hands are all sweaty now. That's lovely, isn't it? That's why we don't normally wear gloves inside, I think, isn't it? Right. After that little bit of chaos, Kieran is going to come and share with us this morning. I've asked him to choose a song that particularly speaks to him, and he's going to do that just now.
so I was woken up quite frantically this morning. Um, Kieran, you have not chosen a song yet, so <laughs> I was given a tune book, and I have looked through the tune book, and um, uh, I came across a song which is New Creation, which is always a bit of a, uh, it's really, yeah, it's a really good, like, fun one that I always have fun with, and it links to um, a verse which is 2 Corinthians 5.17, which I am on the wrong page for. No, I'm not, actually. Uh, which is, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone, and the new is here. Which I think is brilliant, personally, because it's all about how you can live a new life in Christ, and how any day it can change, and any day it can stay the same. Which is a really reassuring message. Um, it links well to the words. which are also really good because it talks about how in the grace of God your heart's overflowing. It talks about how the Lord can empower you and how it makes everything better, which I think is great. Uh, it carries on to say that it, we can help in our ministry in recollection and reconciliation with God. And I think that in a world that kind of lacks that sometimes, it's a really good message to have. So yeah, that was it basically. Oh, apparently we're going to sing it as well. <laughs> Don't know who's going to sing it. Me. Thank you, Kieran. Great song for us this morning. Today we begin um, our self-denial um, appeal for this year. For the next five weeks, there will be um, video to look at, focusing this year particularly on um, young people within the Salvation Army. Now we're going to watch a little video. And uh, for those of you who I think are probably a seven or above and might be able to uh, write, unless you are very good at writing, um, there is a little sheet at the front I'm going to leave while the video is playing. Listen to the video. 
because you need to know what we are focusing on for this year's self-denial, when does it happen, what does it mean, um, and how we might be able to raise some money for that. Let's watch the video, and if you would like a sheet, there are uh, pens and pencils here. I'm going to leave them on the end there, and you can come and get those. Hello, I'm Lynette. And I'm Eli. Welcome to the first of our films for this year's Self Denial Appeal. For this year's Self Denial Appeal, we're focusing on children and young people and how the Salvation Army is supporting, enabling, caring for and being changed by children and young people around the world. But before we get into that, let's look at last year's appeal. Last year, we focused on caring for creation. Captain Joe Moyer talked to officers and staff in Kenya, Indonesia, Costa Rica and Bangladesh. And we heard about the impact of climate change on the Savage Army's work and what it's doing to combat it. Thank you for digging deep. You gave so generously, and your self-denial money is already making a difference. You may be wondering, what is self-denial? But even if you do know, here's a reminder. Self-denial is an appeal that happens every year to raise money for the work of the Salvation Army around the world. Almost all Salvation Army call take part not just here in the UK and Ireland, but all over the world. And it's been around for a long time. William Booth introduced the idea to the Salvation Army way back in 1886. The idea stuck and we've been doing it ever since. Self-denial gives us time to reflect and think beyond our borders to the Salvation Army's international work we are part of a global movement and self-denial gives us the opportunity to support the Salvation Army financially across the world. Some people see it as a challenge to go without something for a week or a month and give the money they've saved to the appeal. Some people give a week's salary. You might have heard of OSIM's one week salary of missionary service. That probably involves a bit of advanced planning. Some of the money we give goes to our mission partners. They are Denmark and Greenland, Finland and Estonia, Ghana, including Togo, Pakistan, and South and North East. All the rest goes to international headquarters in London. They send it to the places that need it most, and it supports the mission of the Salvation Army around the world. It funds the background things, like church infrastructure, all the essential things that enable Salvation Army officers, staff and volunteers to do what they're good at. Now we can't cover everything that the Salvation Army does in a few short films. So like previous years, we're focusing on just one part. This year, it's children and young people. That doesn't mean this year's money will go exclusively to youth projects. It does mean that your self-denial money will support the global mission of the Salvation Army and that includes the amazing work it's doing supporting children and young people. As the world recovers from the COVID-19 pandemic, other problems are troubling our planet. In these uncertain times, many millions of children and young people are caught up in difficult circumstances that are not of their making. Wherever it's at work, the Salvation Army is doing what it can to equip, enable and support them. For the next few weeks, we hear from three young people in Kenya, Moldova and Pakistan. We'll hear about some of the challenges they are facing and how the Salvation Army is supporting them. We'll be hearing from just Frida in Kenya. She was born with spina bifida, a condition which has affected her mobility and means she needs crutches to get around. Because of her disability, she's faced bullying and discrimination. We'll be hearing from Dimitri. He's from Ukraine, but he's in Moldova at the moment. He's one of the millions of people who fled Ukraine to escape the bombing. And next week, we'll be hearing from Joyce in Pakistan. 
Joyce is part of the Salvation Army in Lahore, Pakistan's second largest city. It can be hard for any young person to reach their dreams, but in Pakistan, if you have a Christian faith and you're a woman, it makes things harder. Joyce isn't put off. Her dream is to become a doctor. There are quite a few ways to give to self-denial. You can use the envelope or this year's collection box. There's this QR code that links through to salvationist.org.uk or if you have a standing order set up already, you can make a payment that way. Have a word with your core treasurer. Well, that's all for today. We look forward to seeing you next time. So our self-denial appeal for this year. Um, there are leaflets which will be given, which will be available at the end of the meeting that take a little bit more in-depth look at that and have some more information on them. And uh, in five weeks' time, I can't remember the date, 5th of March, thank you, um, there will be opportunity for us to bring those gifts um, before the Lord to be used in the work across the world. Let's just share in prayer together now. Lord, we thank you first of all for the Salvation Army and the work and ministry that takes place in 130 countries. And Lord, we recognise that the bounty that you give to us, you give to us not to keep necessarily for ourselves, but to share. And so, Lord, we would ask that you would prompt our hearts in these coming weeks, maybe to give um, a little of what we have, to go without ourselves in order that we can give for the ministry and the work of the Salvation Army overseas. Lord, we pray your blessing upon those countries. We pray your blessing upon the officers that are ministering there. We pray your blessing especially upon the officers from the UK territory that serve overseas. Lord, we recognise that some of those places are not easy to serve in, not always safe to serve in. And so, Lord, we pray your blessing and your protection upon them. Challenge us, Lord, in these days to give generously, to give sacrificially for our self-denial appeal for this year. In Jesus' name and for your kingdom's sake we pray. Amen. Amen. Now I think... We have some music from the African choir.
Thank you, that was fabulous as usual. I was trying to get Michael to wiggle his way back up the stairs at the same time as they were going. He refused, he said, you can if you want. <laughs> he needs loosening up a bit. <laughs> uh, we're just going to pause for a, 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 just a couple of moments and focus on this um, account of Noah and this great flood. We hear right at the beginning, Noah is a righteous man. That wasn't why I chose Michael. We just chose, I chose him because we knew he, that Noah was particularly old. Um, but Noah was a righteous man. He walked, we hear in scripture in verse 9, without fault. Without fault. He walked with God. We hear that he was 600 when the flood happened. He was 500 when uh, he had his first son. And 950 when he died. Um, we hear that at that time, I don't know whether I'm saying this right, Nephilim were still walking the earth. These were giants, brutish and violent giants who tyrannized the people. We hear that God had this state of sadness. Now, I think this is described because that is all we can understand as human beings. Do we believe that God gets sad in the same way as we do as humans? Possibly not, but we understand um, that this is described in a human form because that's all that we can comprehend, God's despair at mankind. Mankind had stopped seeking God and the world was past recovery. I kind of think of the potter. You know, when you get a pot and you know that it's all going wobbly and they just collapse the whole thing and start afresh. 
God gives Noah very, very specific instructions. He talks about the materials. He talks about the sizes. He talks about the contents. Now, we're talking about a man here who had no experience of this form of rain, who lived um, hundreds of miles away from the local, local, the, the um, nearest river, even if that appeared at that point. Anyone who has watched the film Evan Almighty will even glimpse a tiny portion of the ridicule that Noah may have experienced when he started building this monstrosity of a boat. But Noah is promised safety. If he is obedient and he follows the instructions that God has given, Noah is promised safety. This would become a covenant relationship between Noah and God. God instructed Noah, Noah obeyed to the letter, and this covenant relationship was established. We read in verse 22, the end of the reading that Michael brought to us, Noah did everything as God had commanded him. And the proof that he'd got that right comes in the very ver- next verse. Now no, um, God said to Noah, go into the ark. This is what you've prepared it for. This is what you've built it for. Go into the ark and take on this huge responsibility of caring for these people for the um, days that that would happen. 150 days the earth was flooded for. And then we hear in verse 5, Noah did all that God had commanded. Not once do we hear Noah saying, well, hang on a minute. This is ridiculous. How many of us have had a toy ark or have seen pictures that are brightly coloured with all the animals coming beautifully walking into the ark, um, played with the toy or had pictures? They are not realistic. And I'm sorry to shatter anybody's dream if you have a beautiful rainbow-coloured ark and it's all pretty. That was not the realistic picture. Neither should the ark even look like this. Now, my dad was a carpenter, a joiner, um, and builder by trade. So I like wood, and I I like the grain of wood, um, I like the smell of wood. Neither would it be like that beautiful um, cypress wood that was all varnished and lovely. No, because in scripture we're told that Noah was told to cover it in pitch. That's the, the tar stuff. If you want to know anything about that, I would ask somebody who knows about putting tar and pitch and stuff on a road. Um, It's black, it's smelly, it's sticky to start with. It wouldn't be firm enough for what was about about to happen and neither would the ark, any joint that was wood that the ark was held together with would not have held together. It took Noah's faithful service and God's response, this covenant response to Noah's faithful service Because we hear in scripture that God sealed the ark shut. So whatever little blemishes in the joints there might have been, whether the pitch was um, warm in the heat and would have started to be sticky and melt or anything like that, whether the animals would have fought together, whether there would be enough food, all of those things, God took care of because he sealed the ark secure. His hand was upon it, upon this whole obedience that Noah had undertaken. Noah did what he could, the best of his human ability, and God did the rest. For 40 days, the rain didn't just come down, the floodwaters rose as well. The springs of the deep burst forth. And if we add all of those days up, 150 days, those people were living in that close proximity in this smelly black ark that was on the floodwaters. This is not a beautiful picture anymore, is it? And after 40 days, we know that the ark came to rest on Mount Ararat. And another 40 days, Noah opened the window. The raven came out, flew around, and then after another seven days, the dove came out, flew around, and then after another seven days, the dove didn't come back. The sign to Noah that things might be changing. And then we get to chapter 9, 
It, it covers quite a lot of chapters, this account. When God opens the ark. And in verse 3, he says to Noah, I now give you everything. No longer did they have to be vegetarians or vegans. They could eat the animals that were multiplying. They were to be accountable for how they treated each other. We read in chapter 9 and verse 6, because they were all made in the image of God. And then verse 13, God's promise. I set my rainbow in the clouds as a reminder that love covenant of God's hand upon Noah and his family. No more would that happen. No, no, never again would that happen. Now, I don't know about you, but we always, I, we always stop and look at a rainbow. Even when it's raining and then the sun comes out, I actually look for a rainbow because I know the chances are there will be one there. And we know that it takes the rain and the sunshine coming together to create such beauty in the sky. And we're reminded when we see that of God's love and God's faithfulness to us. But the rainbow was really the final credits of the story. It was the final credits on an account of one faithful and obedient man who walked with God. He followed God's commands so that God could do his work. And I think if there's one lesson that every one of us, from the youngest to the oldest here this morning, can take away, it's are we faithful to God's commands? Do we walk with God? Are we obedient? Do we follow God's commands so that he can do his work through us? Now, maybe we're not ready for such a big task um, that Noah was tasked with, but we can get ready for whatever God has planned for you and for me by being obedient for listening to listening to God's voice and his command to us and doing the work that he charges us with so that God can do his work. We're going to sing a very simple refrain together. Very simple words and yet very profound for us this morning. It's number 595 if you're using a songbook. Here on the screen. Let's just share in these words together.
Lord, may those be the words, the prayers of our hearts this morning. As we look at the long ago historical character of Noah, as we recognize that he walked with you and he was obedient to your word so that you could do your work in our world. And Lord, as we bow before you just now, may that be the simplest prayer of our heart, that we too will be obedient to you, that we will walk with you, that with your help we will be blameless, that we will be righteous and grow in that righteousness as we walk with you. Lord, may we be obedient to your word and your call upon our lives for the task that you have for us to complete so that you can do your work within our world. Be with us, Lord, we pray. Amen. And we're going to sing as we close our meeting this morning. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. Forever God is faithful. Forever God is strong. Forever God is with us. Forever. Thank you. If you have an animal in the ark, I will take it into the foyer. They will all walk out while they're in the, uh, the foyer after the meeting. So you can come and collect them from there. Thank you. Let's stand and sing. Forever God is faithful. Now, Lord, as we go from this place, may your faithfulness follow us every day of this coming week. May you bless us, may you keep us safe until we meet again. Amen.